Alright, so today I'm going to show you guys how I uh, build all my arrows. I'm going to be building um, Beeman Bow Hunter, Beeman ICS Bow Hunter shafts and 340 spine. I've shot these for about uh, four or five years now. And they've always done pretty well for me. So we got to get ready for the Total Archer Challenge if we even have it this year with all the with the pandemic going on. Um, last year I built them with uh, green lighted knocks, um, all green fletchings, green wrap, and then that's about it. Um, this year I'm doing a gray wrap with green fletchings and a green lighted knock. So let's get into it. So the first thing we got to do is match up the length of my current arrow to cut the other ones to proper length. So I'm pulling out my lighted knock and throw in the factory knock because all the other ones have that. They're all going to get switched over to them. I just don't have the knocks right now. So I'll take this, set it in my saw, and I'm about half inch longer than it need to be. Move it. One thing you guys got to keep in mind when you're cutting your arrows is keep your arrow stop, arrow block, whatever you want to call it, tight so that when you're pushing against it to make sure you get that proper length that it doesn't move. And another thing you want to do is roll the arrow when you're cutting it and just get to the edge where it just starts cutting and then you roll it. That way you get an even straight cut you don't have to worry about squaring it off. I mean you still do but I'm just not going to do that because I don't have an arrow square with me. So I'm going to get into cutting that. I will cut a few and then I'll be right back. Alright, we'll step into the next step, which is cleaning out the inside of the shaft to make sure that you get all the carbon dust out of there, and then we'll get into gluing in inserts. So I just had to run upstairs and grab some Q-tips and some 99% isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl, however you say that. Um, I'm going to use this, I'm going to dip a Q-tip in it, and then rub the inside of the shaft, what it'll do is I'll grab all that carbon and I'll run the alcohol side in, clean out as best as I can, flip the Q-tip over and clean out and dry it out. And this, should, this is the longest part. Not really, I just hate it. So I'll just show you real quick. So I'm taking the Q-tip and I'm just 
pushing it in and then rubbing it up and down, moving it around so I can make sure I get to all the sides. When I pull it out, it should have a little bit of carbon dust left on it, but look how much dust there is. I'll show you some more. You can see here, this one's a lot more black. It's got a lot more dust on it. This one does too. You can see. Pulls a lot of that dust out. Helps you get a better bond with your glue. No matter how good your glue is, you're not going to get a good seal. Make sure your inserts stay in. If you do not have. So unfortunately, I cannot find any glue of mine for arrows. So it looks like I'm not going to be gluing in field. Oh, sorry, inserts today. So I'm just going to set them in my little box I got here so I don't lose them. And then we'll get straight into fletching. Gluing in inserts is easy. You just kind of put glue on them and push them in the shaft. So I like to put wraps on my arrows just in case if I cannot, um, like I said, I have an issue with like a fletching coming off or something, I can just get a new wrap, throw the wrap on the shaft and not have to deal with um, like scratching fletchings off the shaft and all the glue and making sure it's all right and alcoholing it again. I mean alcoholing it again anyway, but. So I'll take my shaft and you gotta be careful not to get any alcohol on the knock here because it will destroy the knock. It'll start eroding it and eating it away and I need it for fletching. So I will about five inches of the shaft here, I'll take alcohol and I'll just wipe all the shafts down, make sure that the, the wrap's gonna stick well, and then I'll do that again on top of the wrap, wipe the wrap down, and then I'll fletch the, the fletchings. Put the veins on there and just hit the second one. So, let's start doing that. So when you're installing wraps on your arrows, you want to grab a mouse pad so that, because um, it's a little spongy, and what it'll do is it'll kind of let that arrow sink into it, and you'll be able to get that wrap on with no bubbles on there. Um, so we'll get ready to start doing that. I've got 12 of them cut out, one inch by four inch, just because I measured the wraps that I've got on there, and that's the length they are, and that's what I like. So let's get into doing it. Maybe able to hear some kids in the background. It's my cousin and my little brother are playing video games. So, let's line this up with the back edge of the arrow. Now, I'll just press on it, make sure, take the wrap up, make sure everything is all nice there. And then I'll take this and I'll press kind of firm and just roll the wrap on there. And let's go back, you can look, make sure. And that wrap went on straight, rolled over nice. It's got a little bit of an overseam here so that everything matches up well. So I'll go through and I'll do all my arrows exact same way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that on every single one of my arrows. And um, I'll do a time lapse so it doesn't take forever. But take your time on this step. You don't want to mess it up and then have to either cut or buy more. Because you normally only buy 12. Alright, so now they've got all the wraps done. They look pretty good. Um, I'm gonna get my fletching jig set up and I'm gonna wipe these down with alcohol. So, one thing I gotta do first before I can 
set my fletching jig up real quick. This is the boning pro class jig. Um, just straight, no helical. I just put a little bit of an offset on them. But I picked this up for like 35 bucks on Lancaster Archery Supply. And works good and it can do three or four fletch or six fletch if you want to do all the math for it. But um, I'm going to take my existing arrow, set it in the jig and line the fletchings up with the clamp and get her going. My little cousin just came in so so I got to take the four fletch thing out of there and put in the three fletch notches so that I only put three fletchings on and that's all I need. So. So I just finished doing my last arrow. I just want to thank you guys for watching and everything like that. Um, one last thing, if you're looking to get into fletching your own arrows, I really do recommend it. Um, it's helped me to create a more accurate batch of arrows because I got to fletch them all um, rather than factory veins and stuff like that. Or even if you just have some fletchings come off, it's nice to learn how to, to put them back on. Because, I mean, I've shot through a deer and had a fletching come off. And I want to keep using that arrow, so learn how to fletch arrows, repair arrows, and stuff like that. It's just a good thing to know. Um, it's not it's not expensive to get started. Jig's about 35, 40 bucks for a decent one. If you want to get like the Bitsenberger or whatever, that's up. That's a little bit more. Um, glue's cheap. It's five bucks a thing. Veins are relatively cheap. I got a pack of a hundred veins for like 12 bucks. And you don't need an arrow saw, you can have your pro shop cut it for you, wherever you get your bare shafts. Um, I know Lancaster Archery Supply, if you order them from them, they they charge you like 20 cents per arrow that you cut, which if you don't have an arrow saw, is worth it. Arrow saws aren't bad either, they've come down a little bit. They're about For the one I've got, I paid like $180 when I got it, but I think you can probably find it for like $120 now. But other than that, I just want to thank you guys for watching. You guys have a great day and start building your own arrows.